Hey there, how's it going? I'm back again with Buster, uh, Buddy. That's what my girls named him. His name is Buddy. They keep reminding me. I'm back with Buddy, our Flemish giant buck. Nice, large, seven-month-old rabbit. And we're talking today about the three tips for raising rabbits. The three basic principles of keeping and housing rabbits. Things that keep them healthy and alive, basically. Let's start at the basics. A lot of things that people ignore or just overlook or accidentally don't know. So let's cover those quick. <coughs> the first point of keeping rabbits, I'm talking keeping, housing, and raising, the first point that you really need to, to know and understand is rabbits have to be dry. If rabbits get wet, you can have a lot of problems. They're, they're not designed really to shed rain well with their hair like some of the other animals are. They're not like the deer so much or some of the, they're not like a duck, you know, where the water just beads right off of them. Rabbits don't do good when they get wet. When they get wet, they can't keep their body temperature, especially when it's a little colder. So they get very cold very quickly when they get wet, and that besides being cold, and they can get a hypothermia from that, it's, it can easily set in a pneumonia. And a pneumonia in rabbits is very serious. Rabbits don't do good when they get that kind of cough, cold stuff going on. It can take them out really quickly. So rabbits need to stay dry. Let's write that down. Rabbits need to stay dry. Do you like being wet? No, I don't. See, there you go. The second point is rabbits really appreciate quiet. And honestly, loud noises can be a big problem for rabbits. I actually had some severe health complications in a bunch of our rabbits, our younger growing rabbits, when I was cutting firewood with the chainsaw. Just maybe 50 yards or a little bit less away from where the rabbits were. Just a lot of racket and we actually had a lot of illness creep in all of a sudden. We had some kind of some coccidiosis things going on with the rabbits. We had all we had some some sort of mystery illnesses going on but all I could relate it to and it happened three times every time I could relate it to stress caused by loud noises every time. It's a common knowledge among rabbit owners that loud noises can actually cause a rabbit to go and have a heart attack. They have a sort of weak heart. You can frighten a rabbit to death and the best way to do that, well, it would be pretty bad, but that happens from loud noises. Um, a neighbor of mine across town, the neighbor across town, he's only about seven miles away, he's my neighbor. My neighbor called up and asked me about his rabbits he actually bought some of mine at one point, and he said, all those rabbits are dead. Can you come and help me figure out what happened? No signs of illness, no signs of animals getting in the cages, nothing at all that I could see. But there were dog tracks back and forth, and he did say there was a lot of barking the, that night, the night before he found them all dead. Well, come to find out, the neighbor's dog had been out, the neighbor's dog just bothered his rabbits, ran back and forth along the cages, barking for a while, and riled them off enough that all the rabbits basically died of heart attacks. That can happen. You can frighten a rabbit to death. Rabbits need quiet. They hate loud noises. They hate it. They just don't handle it well. Rabbits need quiet. Quiet. I tell my kids that quite a bit. The other thing that rabbits need is shade. I actually had one rabbit, my prize rabbit. He was a he was a grand champion, and the best silver fox I had ever seen. Well, he died. He was getting a little older, only about four and a half, okay, five and a half years old. But still, he died from sunstroke. I, without thinking about it too much, I didn't have the rabbits protected from the shade. I went and I moved the cage back to a spot where in the summertime they had lots of shade, brush and trees and quite a heavy overgrowth of autumn olive over there, black basically all the sun. What I didn't think about, probably because it was still pretty cold out, it was springtime, so we're talking 50 and 60 degree weather for the most part, but 
the leaves were not grown out on the trees yet and on the bushes yet. So there was basically no shade. And that pure straight sun on a dark black colored rabbit with very thick hair. Plus we had two or three days where it was just a little warmer, closer to 80 degrees. That rabbit, I came home from work and he was dead. I saw all the other rabbits were laying down. They do this kind of flop where almost like what you're doing, but I think it's because you're grumpy to be in here. They flop, they kind of sprawl their legs out, they pant heavy. They're trying to cool down as much as they can. They, they spread their arms and legs out because it helps them to cool down more. And that's a sign that they're overheating. Well, my rabbits didn't have enough shade. I thought they did. I didn't think about the fact that there weren't leaves on the trees. My bad. That one cost me big time. Rabbits need shade. Once again, sum it all up, the three things that rabbits need are dry conditions, quiet conditions, or at least semi-quiet, no very loud noises, and they need shade. Rabbits can't handle very much full contact sun. They can have some full sun, but they need a way to get into the shade, whether that is just a, a nicely ventilated enclosed hutch in their rabbit pen, or just a nice cover that keeps most of the shade in their cage all day long, something like that. Rabbits need shade. Don't forget to check out the website northernhomesteading.com. Northernhomesteading.com is my website, my blog, with tons of information, articles, and some courses that I'm putting together for you guys. And check out Homestead Know How, the Facebook group, Homestead Know How. I'm posting a lot of cool stuff there. Come, come on and join in the group. Now, I'm going to go put buddy here back in his cage. I will catch you later. Bye now.